examining cellulose. So cellulose is a biopolymer that we're going to be looking at here because cellulose is important as a new type of fuel source, a renewable fuel source, instead of relying on petroleum. And so let's learn a little bit more about cellulose here. I've got the ring structure of cellulose. Now, all you bioheads will be able to rattle off the formula of cellulose, or rattle off at least, sorry, the formula of glucose. So we have C6H12O6. And cellulose is a polymer made up of glucose units joined together via condensation polymerization. So let's have a look at the structure of glucose. Now, glucose exists in different forms. And when I say that, structural forms or isomers, and this particular one here is called beta-glucose, and uh, it's the ring structure of glucose. We can have straight chain uh, varieties as well. And so in solution, you'll have an equilibrium between straight chain and a ring form. So I'm just drawing the ring form here. And with the ring form, you can see that one oxygen is in the ring structure itself. And then you have a hydrogen up here, an OH group down there, OH, hydrogen, etc., all the way around. So if we were to count the numbers of carbons, you've got six there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve hydrogens and six oxygens. So let's look at one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's glucose there. Now, a few bits of terminology. This carbon right there is called the anomeric carbon the anomeric carbon and it is the site where we can have this OH group being below the ring or above the ring when it's below the ring we say it's beta glucose when it's above the ring we say it's alpha glucose so that's just something to be aware of because the position of the OH will affect the type of bonding that happens and uh, we'll learn a lot more about that detail later but uh, it's very important for cellulose. So if I was to draw cellulose in a very basic version, very basic version, instead of adding all that detail there, let's just draw the ring structure like, like so. And then we go up for a bonding here. And then we will go... Oops. Okay, so we can see here, drawn very precisely, I might add, as you can see, we've got the ring forms here, and it's alternate. So we've got the oxygen at the top, oxygen down the bottom. Oxygen at the top, oxygen down the bottom. We'll keep going in that sort of format. You'll notice that the bonding we've got here, the, bond, the, the oxygen is pointing upwards, pointing downwards. So this here is the alternate forms where we get beta-glucose flipping around, and that re results in a linear chain. So alternate glucose units are arranged like that, and that forms a nice linear change. So the cellulose polymers are very, very straight. They can pack really, really close together, which means that they're very strong, they're very rigid. Uh, it also means that the hydroxide groups are not extending outwards so that they can then bond with water. As a result, cellulose is not very soluble in water. So what's this linkage called? Well, let's go back to our structure over here. This carbon here is the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, and the six is up here. So this first carbon here is this one here. And this is upside down, right? This has been flipped upside down. This is actually the fourth carbon there. Okay, the fourth carbon. So because we've got one, two, three, four. So that's four. And so what we have, this linkage here between the glucose units is called a uh, beta 1, 4 glycosidic link. Okay. So we have a beta 1, 4 glycosidic link that creates cellulose being nice and linear in this particular form here. So what else have we got to remember about this? Well, the fact that cellulose is a biopolymer. And biopolymers are made by living organisms, right? It also is formed by the condensation reaction. Okay, and so that's the very basics of cellulose that we're going to be looking at at the moment. Okay, we'll go delve into a bit more detail later in another video. But that's the basics behind cellulose in terms of a condensation polymer.
Okay, we're going to consider a little bit more of that later when we talk about biomass. All right, that's it. See you next time.